Every once in a while, we wonder what will happen to us after we die. When near misses bring us face to face with our own finitude, a fleeting thought crosses our mind. Where will I be when the casket is closed or my ashes are scattered about like chaff to the wind? We also asked, will anyone at all remember me? Well, sure, we'll remember your smile. That is, if you smiled when you were here. Uh, we will remember your generous and giving spirit. That is, if you had one and you showed it. Uh, we will remember your good deeds. That is, if you did any while we're here. But you, as a body, will be gone. <sighs> Just like that. Where to, you ask? Well, to heaven, say all the preachers, and we hope, we nod hoping that every single one of them is right. We want to know that that's where we'll go. We, we want to believe it about our loved ones and our friends who have gone before us. We want to believe it about ourselves and we sing the hallelujah chorus with great gusto every Easter because we want to believe that the Bible is closer to the truth than Voltaire, Carl Sagan, Richard Dawkins, or even our own well-meaning agnostic friends. Oh, yes, we want to believe it, don't we? And in the backs of our minds, in the deepest recesses of our hearts, we sometimes find ourselves humming, Oh, Lord, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in. Sing it with me. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. Come on. When the saints go marching in. Surprisingly, when we sing that song and Paul hears us singing it, Paul wants to say to us, hey, you already are. You already are part of the saints of God. Don't worry about your future beyond this life. Don't worry about what's going to happen to you because you only go into everlasting life by the grace of God. Don't worry about it, says Paul. You're already saints. Don't Worry and don't be in such a hurry. I remember years ago standing with my predecessor in Dallas, John Anderson, back in the narthex there in First Presbyterian Church where they have marble, marble plaques of former pastors with their names engraved and their dates. And I was just standing there with John and he was telling me about some of the former pastors because one was his grandfather, one was his uncle, and he knew them well. And, and then I asked him an impertinent question. I said, John, how do you get your name on a plaque? He said, you have to die to get a plaque. I'm not in that much of a hurry. I said, don't hurry. Don't be in such a, a worry about getting on to heaven. Paul says, you already are one of the saints. And we respond, well, Paul must have a pretty broad view of saints. In fact, one that's sort of watered down. Aren't, aren't the saints God's greatest works of art? I mean, don't all the great world leaders pale in comparison? Or don't they seem small next to the saints? I mean... Those great writers and leaders and, and thinkers and doers seem to be better than most of us, but they are still altogether of this world, whereas saints seem to have come from another planet altogether. Like the stained glass windows we see here in this beautiful place, the saints are the ones through whom the light of God shines. And yet Paul says, you already are saints. 
Well, I don't know about you, but I don't feel much like a saint these days. I mean, do you really feel like... Think of all the, the mistakes we make in our life. We, we all make them. I mean, and if we don't know our own mistakes, then our family members can and our friends can point them out to us. You know, they know them well. They know we have blind spots in our lives. I remember one time standing with Alex Haley, the author of Roots, at the Alamo in San Antonio with some other dignitaries, and we were packed in in a large crowd, and the sun was behind us, beating down. And I remember an announcer announced over a loudspeaker that Alex Haley was in the crowd, and suddenly all the autograph seekers were pouncing upon us and, and trying to get autographs. And, and one of the lady came up to me and said, Are you Alex Haley? I said, Lady, you must be looking into the sun. <laughs> we all make mistakes, don't we? Uh, I remember an author I read a while back who said, uh, I could write a book about my life. I'd call it 10,000 mistakes. I've made them all. Wife, kids, education, job. I don't even remember the first 6,000. We all make mistakes, don't we? Of course, the problem isn't the mistakes we make by accident. It's the bad we do intentionally, isn't it? Uh, uh, you all remember that cartoon character Marvin in the comics, an infant who's always getting into a little bit of trouble, and, and someone says to him, this is a very, very important day. It's a big day for you, Marvin, as they pull up to the church, and he's sitting on his mother's lap in the pew and looking around. And he says to himself, he's thinking to himself, boy, getting baptized must be a really, really special event because I'm wearing the same outfit in which dad was baptized and his parents and, and, I, and my mom has bought a new dress. My dad has a brand new tie. Uh, my grandma and grandpa are here. Wow, getting baptized must be really special. And in the next frame, with a sinister grin and shifty eyes, Marvin is thinking, it just seems such a shame to ruin it all with one of my crying fits. And that's what he does. We all make mistakes, and sometimes we even do them intentionally, don't, don't we? Because no matter whether Paul says we are saints, we are still sinners in our lives, aren't we? In fact, the truth is, sinners are, saints are sinners redeemed by grace. And Paul says, you already are. In fact, being a member of the church is like being one of the saints, and that's what we all are called to be. Those who went before us, even those we recognize today, those who went before us across the last hundred years that we celebrated at the centennial last Sunday at the Alabama Theater, always understood that they were saints and saints are sinners redeemed by grace. They knew that none of us is perfect. None of the communion of saints who have gone before us, none of that great cloud of witness well, that cloud of witnesses is perfect. Uh, Kathleen Norris, in her book, Amazing Grace, the Vocabulary of Faith, talks about perfectionism in the Christian life is not a kind of Martha Stewart perfectionism, the high priest of perfectionism, high priestess. No, uh, it's not about perfect houses or perfect meals or everything being perfect. In fact, we know Martha Stewart isn't perfect herself. It, it's about living the Christian life to full Christian maturity. That's what Jesus means when he talks about being perfect. He wants us to live the full Christian life, to, to come into God's grace and, and, and know that we are actually saints in process. Now, those who have gone before us have always understood this. Uh, and they have also understood that we are not saints because of our own doing, 
but only by the grace of God. That it is God who calls us into sainthood. It is God who calls us into the church. In fact, the, the word for church, ecclesia, literally in Greek means the called out ones. And the saints who went before us, that great cloud of witnesses that is compassed about us, are looking at you and me today as we celebrate All Saints Day. And they are saying to you and me, as Paul said long ago, uh, you are our glory and our joy. We are proud of you because of what you are doing now with the church that we loved so much. We know that you are struggling to keep the church moving forward into a new century, and we are cheering you on. That's what the cloud of witnesses does. That's what those who are saints who have gone before us do for us. And it's fascinating because when we celebrate All Saints Day, what we're doing is looking back, as we did last Sunday to the centennial, we are looking back to those early Christians who left South Highland Church and moved across the street to Temple Emmanuel with Henry Edmonds, the founding pastor. We are in, in many ways seeing our roots when we look back at the saints who have gone before us. Several years ago, I stood with Alex Haley, the author of Roots, on his farm in Henning, Tennessee, just outside of Henning. It's about a four or five hundred acre farm. And he was talking about how excited he was to be there. He said, you know, I, I, I worked on a farm not far from here, just over there. And, uh, you know, I've got a place in Beverly Hills and a place in Monte Carlo and other places around the country, but I love this place more than any other. We put a lake in over there and a gazebo, and I've turned the barn into my, my library, and next week I'm having Dan Rather and Shirley Temple Blackdown, and we're going to have such a great time. And the words were out of my mouth before I realized it. I said, oh, Alex, you've come a long way from Kunta Kinta, haven't you? And he thought, and he said, yes, I have come a long, long way. Dear friends, Alex said next, but I still have a ways to go. And our country still has a ways to go. Dear friends of IPC, we've celebrated 100 years and We've come a long, long way, but we still have a ways to go. And the saints who have gone before us are encouraging us to move forward into this new century to complete the work that Christ started in them a hundred years ago and to finish, they are saying to you and me, finish what we started long ago. That's what the saints do, they complete the circle, and that's what we are doing here today. We are working as we move into a new century to complete the circle that the saints started, to give back to them what they have given to us. One of my parishioners in Dallas understood that as he sat with his mother just before she died. As he sat there with her, he, he remembered how when he was a dyslexic child, she would read to him three or four hours a day, every single day. And it all came back to him as he sat beside her bed and remembered how she read to him and encouraged him and loved him and supported him. And he took up a Bible and he began to read to her. And he came to the 23rd Psalm and he said, this is your favorite, isn't it? And she squeezed his hand as if to say yes. And he read her the Psalm and then she went on to heaven. He closed the Bible and closed the circle. Don't you see? The saints are the ones who understand that they will be given back a hundredfold whatever 
they have given. Today, we honor and remember the saints who have gone before us so that we can be the saints of God that God really wants us to be. God bless you all.